check this out. This is a old Philips cassette recorder. Looks to be 1970s. It's all taken apart and I think I've found all the pieces that have fallen off on it. There's two compartment doors. I think one's probably for a microphone, one's battery. Ooh, firm. Ooh, that's squishy. Oh, is this like these old ones that don't, it doesn't latch, you just push it? And it's like momentary? Huh. Tone and a volume control. Assume the speaker is here and or here. I think this is the model number tag. Model 1530. And here's the front plate with the Philips logo. That goes over here. And then I guess that's a VU and battery meter. Oh, it's on the side here. Got speaker on off, remote and mic, auxiliary in, I'm assuming. Ear out. So it does have a built in AC power supply. Caution. To prevent electric shock, do not remove the cover. Oh, we are well beyond that. Power requirements. Made in Taiwan. Ooh, that's a. This is newer than I thought. Yeah, let's pop this back cover off. I'm assuming it'll come off. Yes. So we got a square. Oh, wow. What? Okay, it's kind of mushy on this side. Not as bad as I would expect, though. This looks like an idler tire. I'm always bad at judging those. Oh, it's got an oval speaker. I love oval speakers. 8 ohm, 0.8 watts. Big purple capacitor. I'm sure that thing is peak shape. Hmm. I mean, this looks like it's in okay enough shape to just sort of try and see what happens. So we got the motor here, which drives the, this would be the capstan. And then I'm assuming that this idler will transfer it to the reels. But then what does this do? I feel like this would do the reels. Eh, whatever. We grab a power cable. This is one of those kind of older connectors. You can't fit a standard figure eight power cable in here. And the spacing of the two pins in there, I compared, it's slightly narrower. So this looks like it matches those uh, interlock cables on uh, older TVs and radios. So I've put some high quality dollar store carbon zinc C cells in here. Let's see what it does. Noisy motor. Got some. Oh. Some noise coming out of the speaker. I think. I think that's. Yeah, it's coming out of the speaker. It is working. Oh. Okay, went into my junk tape pile, found a Madonna cassette that does not have Madonna in it. Let's see what it does. Oh, what? Oh, it's just really tight springs holding that there. Can't even see if that's moving. It's moving. There's just no sound at all. Maybe flip this around.
Well, clearly getting no sound. I'm going to try and find where the wire to the head goes and see if I can just get some audio going to that. Of course, something as silly as this little cassette deck I was able to find a service manual on. Hmm. Never the complicated stuff. Always something like this. So there's three 10 microfarad capacitors between each amplification stage. I'm hoping it's not a transistor. I mean, these caps are probably not great. Um, so far, every cap that I've bypassed from the back here has improved something. Um, C14, I believe it is, completely got rid of the motor noise. So I'm just going to tack on some 10 microfarad caps over the ones that uh, the coupling caps that go between the, the audio stages to see if I get anything because uh, I can't just do all three at once and they all seem to do something but I still don't get any audio. I just pulled these off an old sacrificial board so I'll just test them make sure they're good and see what happens. All right I think I'm making progress. Volume is maxed but listen to this. So yeah, I'm thinking I'm just going to continue tacking these along the back until I get something that works well enough and I'm convinced that there aren't any uh, bad transistors in here. And then I'll flip to the other side. Oh, I'm bad at filming all this stuff. Okay, update. These were all the capacitors that uh, seemed to get better when I bypassed them. So these are all be replaced. They're all just from a sacrificial junk board heckin yes so what I'm doing is I'm just trying to inject some music and it seems to me like it's still in this stage because when I go further down in fact it does seem like it's at this transistor here so here's uh, the output. So that transistor is working great. That's what I'm going to change with that. But anyway, I'm just kind of poking around. I managed to print off the layout. This layout's slightly different, so I'm having to kind of do some interpretation. The traces over here, I think there must have been a revision to this board because it's not quite the same. But it looks like everything to the right is okay. I think this is uh, my fault. Well, it usually is. So this capacitor here, C10. C10 is the um, coupler that goes to the base of Q3. So that's where I seem to lose the audio. But I think I bridged C10 in the wrong spot. Because if I'm looking here, C10 should go across these two in relation to Q3 and Q4. Now, I have it going, because again, it turns out this these traces are a little bit different. I have it going to the wrong spot. So if I go and I take audio and inject it to C10. Oh, come on. I really got to get a proper audio test thing. Uh, where am I? Here. I get a little bit of audio, but not a lot. But if I go to where I believe I should have soldered it... So, yeah, let me fix that. God damn it, it's always caps. To take you to the greener side And if the boat is built of every lie you ever lied Okay, total recap time. And I'm going to do this for free. I got this for free. And I'm going to use this board out of a scrap VCR to do the recap for free. Because, I don't know, it adds an extra challenge to it and I'm really cheap. So now that I know that uh, these replacements fixed it, I'm going to replace them correctly instead of just bodging them on the back here. Um, other than some squeaking in the motor, I need to oil this. This belt is working. Every, everything's working fine. And uh, I did some looking at what this motor does. So this is the play motor. So it goes to the capstan here. And then there's an idler that does the uh, take up. This 
goes to uh, an idler here that goes back and forth and it's controlled by these switches. So if I want to do fast forward or rewind, well, let's hold this, it just changes the way power is applied to that motor. Super simple. All right, let me get this recapped and then we'll regroup. Mmm, new old caps. Onto the motor. Oh, now it's not making the sound it was. making that horrible squeaking sound. Either way, I'm gonna oil this up. So I just took the back off of this motor, which is a Matsushita Electric Industrial Co. motor. And inside is another motor. Well, I wasn't able to get this out. Uh, there's Loctite on two little tiny set screws and I don't wanna mess with that. Uh, they're very, very small flat blade. But I was able to get at the top of the shaft there and just put a little bit of oil. It seems to have sucked it in nicely, so I'm hoping that gets rid of any of the squealing. A little fast. Okay, let's do some stuff that won't get me nailed here. Not bad. I'm starting to remember what uh, made me grab this. Look at this foam. I'm assuming that this cassette deck is from early to mid 70s, probably at the newest, maybe even late 60s. Look at this. It's perfect. The foam inside this microphone compartment. Eh, it's, it's a little rough. You can see where the microphone used to sit, but still it's not falling apart like a lot of these old uh, old devices are. That's great. Just cleaning it all up now. Got my little front plate. So I'm just scraping off the old, this looks like it almost was two-sided tape or maybe just a thin layer of glue. I'm gonna use glue, so just wanna get this old crap off. So I'm trying to figure out where um, this label went. And the only place I can see where it would have gone, I think, is in the battery compartment right there. Um, I don't think it would have gone on the bottom. This is textured. It would have been kind of ugly. wouldn't have fit there. wouldn't have fit there. Uh, this, this has too many different stages. I, I, I don't think they would have put on the outside. This would have come off too easily. This would have gone hidden in a compartment. I don't think it went on the inside because this wasn't really meant to be open to see this sort of information. So I think I'm going to put it here. I think that cleaned up nicely. Interesting that it's branded Philips. I know Norelco was Philips's brand over here. Uh, but it's kind of all over the place. I've seen some Philips stuff named Rogers Majestic in Canada. Norelco in the US, Norelco in Canada, sometimes Philips here. I know Philips didn't sell under Philips in the US. Might have been different in Canada, I don't know. It's got the hideous yellowy brown. But the cassette mechanism is remarkably good. goes pretty loud. That's after a lot of contact cleaner in these. I think I need to run just a little bit more. Glued these two back on. They were starting to come off. Glue the front plate back on. Unfortunately, it's got two little scratches. This front grill, let's get some light over here. This front grill is metal and it's got a lot of scratches on it. It's actually painted brown to match all the brown plastic. So fortunately it's got some scratches. It almost looks like a copper a copper color behind it. 
It's interesting. Flip this around. Look at the back. Yeah, that's uh, pretty neat. I don't know what I'll do with it. I mean, I mean, a little tiny portable cassette recorder. Unfortunately, I don't have the microphone for it. That would be kind of cool to test out. Um, I also don't have the power cable, so it's just batteries only. The standard modern figure eight won't fit in there. This is that old school spacing that's just slightly closer. Uh, I find sometimes you can jam a figure eight on these if you don't have the shroud around the connector. Let me grab a blank tape. Let's try recording. This has an auxiliary input. I'm going to try recording like off my phone or something. So, uh, the auxiliary in is very quiet, even with the headphone out on this phone maxed. And I think this is meant to go directly to like a speaker output of something. So the microphone input is more sensitive and I can turn the volume down here. Listen to all the noise. I don't know if that's from this or from more likely from the phone. So this actually, I don't know how well that's coming off on the phone or how much of this I can play, but this sounds fantastic for what it is. Very clear. So let me get some royalty free stuff. And uh, I've got two tapes. I've got a period correct BASF. And uh, I've got, this is used, so I had to put some tape over the record tabs. Chrome dioxide. I'm pretty sure this is type 1. Maybe type 2. Because this. This isn't chrome. This is like, uh, I'll have to look this up to see. Anyway, the other tape to try is a 90s special, sealed. I imagine this will probably do better just because it's never been used before. But yeah, let's see. One annoying thing here is there's no pause. There is, I'm assuming, a remote pause, electronic pause, but there's no pause button on here. So... And I gotta hit these just oop, together at just the right time. Can't do that one first. There. Oop. Oh. Okay, we got it. We got all the noise from the phone. Let's let the leader go in. And hit play. the volume shuts this meter off. I'm wondering if that's what the speaker on off switch on the side is. You use the speaker and the volume control to set your audio level then you shut the speaker off. Let's uh, rewind it and let's see what it sounds like. We're off to a great start with all that noise. Hear the flutter amplified record plus play. Mm. So shiny. So now 
we'll set the same thing up. I'm gonna have to put the camera down because I need to poke the record switch so I can push this down so I can set the levels again because I just used the volume control. Honestly, the old cassette kind of sounded clearer. This one sounds a little muffled. You're not going to get hi-fi sound quality out of this. In fact, let's come over to here. Let's rewind you. Then we'll go to tape. Let's see how bad this sounds on a proper stereo. Actually, that's not bad. Well, I did some research, of course, at the very end of the video, and all the advertisements I can see selling this in Canada as a Philips, so it was sold in Canada as a Philips and probably as an Arelco in the US, are from 1971. So this is a 1971 portable cassette recorder. And what I want to do at the end of this video, I played back the two tapes I recorded on the good cassette deck um, and recorded onto the computer. So I'll play some direct feeds at the end so you can hear it. Um, there's noise, there's a lot of noise, but overall for something like this, it's not bad. If you compare it to a lot of the cheaper built down, you know, kids portable cassette decks in the 80s and 90s this thing kicks their ass so anyway yeah enjoy